Amen. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise and to do good. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are a great deep, O Lord. Thou pre preserveth man and beast. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. O continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee, and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me, and let not the hand of the wicked remove me. They, there are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. Amen. Please turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 3. Isaiah, chapter 3. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah and stay the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. The mighty man, the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of 50 and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator. And I will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing, Make me not a ruler of the people. For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. The show of their countenance doth witness against them and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous, that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him the reward of his hands shall be given him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of their paths. The Lord standeth up to plead and standeth to charge the people. 
the Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor is in your houses. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor? Saith the Lord God of hosts, the daughters of Zion. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, and their calls and their round tires like the moon. The chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings, the nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils, and it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent, and instead of well-set hair, baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty. Thy men shall fall by the sword and thy mighty in the war and her beats shall lament and mourn and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. Amen. Dear God, have mercy upon us, O Lord. May we turn away from all that is sin. May we turn away from all pride that is evil, O God. Turn us away from the world, O Lord. Have mercy upon us, O God. May we bow to our knees, Lord, in asking for forgiveness, Lord, for we have become wayward. We have become selfish in our own ways and in our own eyes. Lord, have mercy upon these, your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And let the redeemed say, Amen. Say to the righteous, it shall be what? Well with him. Say to the righteous, it shall be what? Well. Who is the righteous? The one who has forsaken the world. The one who has chosen not to follow after the world but to follow after God in spite of the unpopularity of the stand that he has what? Taken. That is the righteous man. The righteous man is the one who has chosen to surrender his whole heart and mind and soul and spirit to the living God. That's the righteous man. I met with four young men in my office today. Two of them, I spoke to them directly. I spoke, I spoke to them. And when I was speaking to them, you could see that the problem with most of us is that we don't know the word of God. Because I had to open to them a scripture read, as they read it, suddenly their faces were changed. And then I spoke to them the fact that they ought not to be chasing after the fashions of this world. That they have to make sure that they are peculiar people, different people. And you could tell them drinking, drinking the word. And after I have spoken with them, they came and gave me a hug. They said, Pastor, we love you. They love to hear what? The truth. So I want to see the manifestation of it the next time I see them. If they will be looking the same way as they looked yesterday. But we thank God that yet there are people who hear and listen what? To the truth. Say to the righteous, it shall be what? Well with him. 
to the righteous. Don't think that being righteous is something that is not for our time. In fact, that is what we need today, righteousness. Without righteousness, you will never enter into heaven. And talking about heaven, I was speaking to this man who happens to come from Africa, where you and I come from, precisely from Nigeria. And so some of us are people, because of the worldly knowledge that we have acquired, we also tend to dismiss God and the ways of God. As I was speaking to him, I talked about Christ. He said, now, tell me, is Jesus Christ a prophet or what? I said, if I tell you Jesus Christ is a prophet, I know what you are going to say. He's not a prophet. He's the express image of God. He said, you see what you are. And he kept on arguing and arguing. And he said, do you know that we will, there is nothing, no place like heaven. Our, our hearts are recycled. I said, hey. Now, this is somebody from a place I am from. Our hearts are recycled and put in somebody else. Can you imagine that? But he is just the tip of the iceberg of many who walk the streets, the streets of the world. Now, these are people who think there is no God, who think that when they die, it, that is it, that there is, their hearts are going to be recycled and that they will, they will reincarnate and come in, in a different shape. But please don't deceive yourself. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, after that, the judgment. We shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, and we will be judged. But then, with that also, the Lord wants me to let every one of us know that, say to the righteous, it shall be well with him. It shall be well with you, both here on earth, it shall be well with you in the presence of God. On that day of judgment, it shall be well with the righteous. The Lord will say, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little, and I will make you ruler over what? Much. It is not heavenly fashionable for you and I to follow after the fashions of this world. It's not. It's not. Knowing that death is right staring us all in the face is a waste of time and it is foolhardy for you and I to have our hearts following hard after the pleasures and the things of this world, knowing that one day we shall be dead and we shall appear before the judgment seat of Christ and give account of ourselves to God. Now look at what God is speaking to the children of Israel here. Just listen to it in the book of Isaiah chapter 5. I thank God for men like Isaiah. Hello? I thank God for men like Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 3, not chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 3. He was speaking at a time when righteousness was unpopular. He was speaking at a time when he knew that whatever he would say, the people would look down on him and brand him one who is you know, when you are back in Ghana, when you are speaking about, they say you are, colo you are, you are some old-fashioned person. You know, and today that's what they say. They will say that about Pastor Pimpo, you are old-fashioned. He said Christianity has transformed. We are in the, in, the, in the next stage of Christianity. We don't talk about sin anymore. Now we are talking about prosperity. Hallelujah. But how many of us know that the word of God never changes? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there is no better way that I can deliver his message to any one of us than to call the word what it says I should call it. Hallelujah. Men may love me for how sweet I speak, but what good is it if I should die and go to hell along with all those who I try to make to like me or love me? That was Isaiah's theme. And so listen to what it says. It says, For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water, that there is going to be drought. Why? Because Israel was living in sin. Israel was living in what? Sin. 
And you and I surely know that our world today is also living in what? Sin. My beloved, this is not the time to be seeking to speak something to people that they will what? Like me and say, I am a very nice speaker. Hello? Can you hear me? We are living in dangerous what? Time. In dark days. If Isaiah said that the people love their sins like the sins of Gomorrah, and that they don't make any apologies for it, that they openly display the sins of Gomorrah. And that is how it is today with us. Our world today, our, we have taken it to the zillionth degree. We are so bold and daring in projecting sin. Not only do we do project it, but we package it and force it down the throat of others. That is our world today. And so many of us have been left cowering. We are taking a cover. So many of us who call ourselves preachers. Because we don't want to be labeled. We don't want to be blacklisted. We don't want anybody to think, to call us haters. But my friend, let them call me a hater all they want. Yes, I hate sin because God hates sin. Yes, I hate the abominable lifestyle because God hates it. Whatever God hates, I hate. Hello? I cannot love anybody better than how God loves us. And so if God loves us so much that he will say he will call an abomination an abomination, what do you think or who do you think I am? To try to make God think, to make everybody think that God made a mistake by putting that word what there. And that's Isaiah. Isaiah said, God is so angry that God is going to take away the stay. There is a coming famine. If you want to know it, there is a coming what? Famine. There's a great famine and a great drought coming because of our sin. And this famine is not going to be a famine for food, but it's going to be a famine for hearing the word of God, the true word of God, and it has already begun because so many are famished. They don't know the truth because they've been so, I mean, they, they've been dubbed, dubbed with deceit and lies and tempered down word compromise word so much so that they don't know the truth anymore. As I sat with this young man and I saw their eyes lit up, he said, where did this come from? How have we been, this thing be hidden from our side and look at what we are doing, thinking that we are pleasing God by the way we present ourselves. Farming is coming. And it has already what? Begun. He said, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient. Please pay attention because this is God's way. It's God's way. That is how we miss the truth. It is God's word. Yes, he spoke to the children of Israel. But if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 10 very carefully, it says that everything that was spoken to the children of Israel and everything that was done to them was done for us as an example upon whom the end of the world has come so we will not repeat the same thing that what they did. We are the ones upon whom the ends of the world has come. So everything that you see in this prophetic message applies to you and I also that we will not follow in that footstep because when we do, God's judgment will come upon us. And that judgment is what we, some of us will hate. And we don't want to even use it because people will think that we are mean. You know, I, for the 50 something years that I've worked with God, I've never seen a people so discount the word of God as it is being discounted today. How we do it so brazenly. He said, the captain of 50 and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator. And what? The eloquent orator. Aren't they the ones making money today on the show be secute? The eloquent orator, the performers, 
They speak so eloquently and everybody feels like an angel is speaking. They sing so eloquently and that is the one that we cheer. Hello? How many of you and I know that Satan is the best singer? If you take away, if you are, say he was the director of the heavenly choir. So is it any wonder that there are people who sing so nicely? But does that please God? Does God accept that God will say, away from me, away from me, I am not that interested. God is not starved when you and I choose not to sing. He said the rock will even what? Sing. He has birds that sing so sweetly and so beautifully every morning. So if you and I wouldn't want to sanctify ourselves, set ourselves apart, make ourselves as he wants us to be, a peculiar people whose voice is peculiar, whose every manner is what? Peculiar. Those are the people whose songs God accepts. He said, I will give children to be their princes and babies shall rule over them. Look at our world today. Look at our world today. Who are the ones ruling? It is babes and children. They are the ones who say, I am not a he. I am a they. I choose my own pronoun. We control the youth. They are the ones controlling the world today. The children. This is a prophetic word. That's why God wants us to make sure that we speak his oracles. Whatever you pronounce should be the oracle of God. Of God. And we have to let God's word fit the times and seasons that we are in today. Children are the ones ruling the world today. Even those who are grown up are acting like what? Children. Can't identify. A baby. If a little baby born cannot tell the difference between a man and a woman. So when a, an adult can't tell the difference between a man and a woman, we have a problem. Especially when the person is occupying the highest place in the Supreme Court of the land and cannot tell the difference between a woman and a man. We are in a serious problem. And that is what God's word is saying. He said, I'll give children to be rulers over them. And the people shall be oppressed. Everyone by another. And everyone by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable. That is the world we are in today. That's the way we are in today. You can't tell any child anything. You run the risk of being, <laughs> hallelujah, not only jailed, but you run the risk of being, uh, what, what, what word would I use? Humiliated, publicly humiliated. Publicly humiliated. That child will make you look like somebody who just came out of the Kali Lagoon. How many of you know Kole Lagoon? Kole Lagoon is one of the smelliest lagoons that we have in Ghana. You can't stand by it. It is so stinkingly stinky. Well, I can speak about that because that's where I come from. And I pray that the leaders will hear and know that it's time to clean up that mess. Hallelujah. And the people shall be oppressed, everyone by another, and everyone by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable, and we are in those days now. Children are the ones who call the shots. And whatever they want is what is done. Whatever they say is what, they say is what goes on. That is what we are. It happened in Israel. And it is happening in our time. And it happens because we are living in what? Sin. We are living in what? Sin. Sin is what has taken hold of our hearts. Everything of ours. Turn on the television. They can't have enough of sin. Playing football, they have to bring somebody 
stripped naked, the calling herself dressed, and you're looking so naked to sing the national anthem. And everybody is so hale and hearty. With glory in sin. That is where we are. The dishonorable are the ones who are made honorable. And we take delight in desecrating that which is holy. And that is our world today. Isaiah prophesied it then, and it is happening today. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of, the fa of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this room be under thy hand. And that is our world. Look at our leaders, our hand picked. You have money. You can do whatever we tell you to do. So be our what? Ruler. That is what is happening. Let God's word interpret God's word. Word. In that day shall we shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer, for in my house is neither bread <laughs> nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of thy people. If I am, I am poor, I don't have any food to eat. How can I be a ruler? I have had enough of sin. I don't want to mess up anymore. He said, For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is falling because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. That was then. That was what? Then. And today, those who are doing the same and are taking that course, that is the same experience that they will have and it will be far greater and far serious than that. Beloved, this is not the time. This is not the time to try to cover right, for anybody. Because there is a day coming and that day is fast approaching. That day is fast approaching. This is what I told the young men. I said, there is a time we will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Once you are there, you cannot, there is no space between that counter that you are standing before the Lord and behind of you. If you say, I want to go back and make this right, you can't. It's too late. That is why it is important that every second that you and I have we proclaim God's word with all fervency as if tomorrow Jesus Christ is what? Come. Because surely he's what? I like this song. Believers, why do you slack behind in the world given to you by God? Stand firm, stand up and work for God, for Jesus cares for you. Just Look around, people heading towards hell. Oh, believe, just wake up, for oh, the, the fields are all white. The fields are white. The fields are white. So every opportunity we have, for us, we don't know how long we'll be on this parking lot. But for every second and every opportunity we have, God's word has been declared with all fervency. Paul tells Timothy, preach the word of God. Preach it with all fervency. Rebuke, correct. Rebuke and do what? Correct. It's not the time to pamper anybody, but to rebuke sin, to call sin what it is. Hello? Homosexuality is sin and it has to be called a sin. Lesbianism is sin. LGBTQI plus 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 is sin and it's abominable. And every moment we get has it has to be what? Declared. He said that the show of their countenance doth witness against them. And they declare their sin as Sodom. Our world today is like that. We declare our sins as Sodom. June just passed, and the whole nation declared June Pride Month, the month where you show pride. But pride goes before the fall. So we have already announced the beginning of our world, our fall, where we can take what the, 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 the flag, that, the flag, the flag, the rainbow, 
the rainbow, the holy emblem of God, desecrate it, use it as our flag, their flag, and then it will be posted in the White House. What are we talking about? Once it goes right into the White House, it means that the whole nation has embraced that sin. Beloved, that is where we are. Let us not toy with this thing. It's a serious thing. That is why we have to stand firm as believers. Walk uprightly with God. Walk uprightly. Because we are not too far away from the end times. We are not too far away from it. So the show of their countenance doth witness against them. And they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Can you imagine that? Rewarded evil unto your own self. And that is what we have done as a nation. That is what we have done as a people. Rewarding ourselves with our own what? Sin. But God's word is saying in the following verse, Say unto the righteous, Hello? If you are here and you are righteous, again, like I said, the righteous person is the one who has surrendered his whole life to God through Jesus Christ. That is a righteous person. You can be a member of all nations all you want. You can be a Catholic all you want. You can be a Presbyterian all you want. And you can be a Therian Presby all you want. And you can also be a Methodist, one who is Methodolica, Methodolica in all that you do all you want. That doesn't make you a Christian. That doesn't make you a Christian. A Christian is one who has surrendered his whole life to God. Who has come to the place of brokenness. Who has come to the place of contrition. And who has thoroughly and wholly repented and turned away from his sinful ways. And asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come to live in his heart. A Christian is one who, after having, washed, having, having repented, has been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Jesus Christ. That is a Christian. It is not your church that makes you a Christian. It is Jesus Christ who makes you a Christian. That is why it is not good for us to brag of the number of people that we have in our church because the church doesn't make you a Christian. Just because you are a member of a certain church doesn't make you a Christian, my beloved. I want to tell you the truth. Otherwise, you'll be coming to all nations all the time and say, I'm a Christian by virtue of that. Because you come and you don't hear the word of God, you don't allow the word of God to work in your hearts, to transform you, you will die and go to hell, my beloved. Repent and surrender your life to Jesus Christ. He is the one who makes you and I Christians. I am a Baptist. Why? Because I've been baptized by immersion. You can be, you can, they can sink you into the very bottom. Go all the way to the far bottom and come back out and you'll still be the same. I, have been, I, am a, I am a redeemed. Hello? I am what? A redeemed. Who redeemed you? Did he redeem you to live a life of holiness or redeem you to live a life of carnality? So you can see that you are not a Christian because of the church you go to, but you are a Christian because you are in Christ Jesus. You have been washed in the blood. You have been sanctified, set apart unto Christ. Your life rep reflects the life of who? Of Christ. That is why Jesus Christ said, through Paul, he says, we are ambassadors. We are what? Ambassadors. We are what? Ambassadors. We are ambassadors. We are ambassadors. When the world sees you, they see Christ. I told those young men yesterday. I said, when you stand with the unbelievers and talking to them about Christ, all that they'll be looking at is what they are seeing. They say, ah, but you look like us. What is the difference? Your word will mean nothing to them. Because you are like us. 
We have to be moderate in all that we do. Beloved, the word of God said, let your moderation be known unto all what? Men. Let your moderation, the way you dress, the way you carry yourself, the way you present, it matters. And I had to add this to it. He said, well, we will say, but we look on the outside where God looks on the inside. I say, yes, but the, just before you became what you, you did, what you have done, it came from your what? Heart. Your heart. If you choose to be righteous, it comes from your what? Heart. If you choose to look like the world, it comes from what? Your heart. The fashions that we follow after comes after what? Your heart. The, your dress code comes from what? Your heart. Everything originates from your heart. Before you put on that dress that you are wearing, it came from your what? Your heart. Let your moderation be made known unto all men. When you dress, when you put your dress on before you go outside, look into the mirror of God, the Holy Spirit, and ask yourself, how many am I going to lead in the path of what? Righteousness. And how many am I going to lead in the path of what? Sin. Ask yourself. Because the way we present ourselves to the world is going to tell the whole world whether we are ambassadors for Christ or we are ambassadors for the world. We have to. It is important. Pastor Pimpo has become very unpopular on this thing, but I have to. Because you know what? When I stand before the judgment seat of Christ, God is going to ask me of these things. How many people do that I leave, lead astray? And I don't want to lead any one of you astray. I don't want to lead any one of you astray, and I don't want to cover up any word of God that applies to you and I. It's, it behoves me to let us know the truth, for it is the truth that does what? Set us free. It says, say to the righteous, it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Hello? It shall be well with you if you choose the way of righteousness. It shall be well with you. The way of righteousness is a narrow way. Hello? The way of righteousness is what? It's a narrow way. It's a, only a few go through it. That's Jesus Christ saying, you know, I am not the one saying. It says, broad is the way. Many go in. And it's the way that leads to eternal destruction. Narrow, straight is the gate. Few. When the Lord is saying few, he means what? Few. By population, to us human, it would look like it is many, but to God is what? It's few. With regards to the normal, we'll be going to what? Hell. Last week, Friday, the message came. It says, because of the wickedness of the children of Israel, their sinfulness, hell has expanded and is making room for the many that will come in there. And yes, my world, the world today is, is so much into sin that hell has what? Enlarged itself. Beloved, don't be one of the invited guests. Don't. Hello? Don't you and I, any one of us, let it be said of you and I, it shall be what? Well with us. It shall be well with us. Let it be said. And it shall be well with us here on earth. But the best of it that you and I want, that it shall be well with us when we leave this world. Because you think hell is very, very long. Hello? When you go to hell, there is no point of what? Return. Any one of us that will go to hell, there is no point of what? Return. You see how hot it is now? Hell is a zillion times hotter. And there is no water there. There is no fresh air there. No air condition. Put all the energy companies, all of them, all of them together and take it to hell. All the equipments will burn. That is how hot hell is. And yet the Lord says that their worm never dies. It means that we will not die. You will be there in sweltering heat, crying for water, crying for water. I want this to get into our spirit. And it will help us know how to order our lives in this world. 
that will not be quick to embrace the fashions and the cultures of this world when God's word says that, beloved, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For those who love the world, the love of God is not in them. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with, the, with him. For the reward of his hands shall be given him to the wicked. Who is the wicked person? The wicked person is the one who receives from God and doesn't show gratitude. The, the wicked one is the man who receives from God and doesn't show what? Gratitude. What kind of gratitude? That is surrendering your all to him. Surrendering your all to him and walking circumspectly what? With him, before him. That's a wicked person. No, no, the wicked person is not that person who takes a knife to go and kill somebody alone. No, no, no. You and I can call ourselves all Christians that we want and we'll still be what? Wicked. Because we receive God's blessings and we, like, we always act like monkeys asking for more and not doing what will bring glory to the God. Our lifestyle are completely what? Diametrically, diametrically opposed to everything that God's word says we should do. That's a wicked person. Let us look from within the church before going outside. Because the outsiders, they already have chosen the ways of the enemy. But in the house of God, there are so many of us who display wickedness. If you saw how Jeremiah and Isaiah decried the prophets, and here he's talking about the prophets. Prophets have turned the people of God into customers extorting and exploiting and doing all kinds, sending them into abject poverty, promising them peace and yet depriving them of all that they have. That is the wickedness that has entered into the house of God today. Wickedness. And God says, the wicked shall receive of the works of what? Of their hands. As for my people, children are their oppressors. We hear that and women rule over them. Pastor Pimple, don't preach that today. The women will get over you. They say, hey, the women, what is wrong with women ruling? Hello? But this is what God's word is saying. I would think that in the house of God, Christians will be the one who can appreciate the role of a woman and the role of what? And a man. But let's just talk about something. They say, but, but. We ask, but, but. It's always, it is almost like the culture or the rules, America's, whatever, America or the Western, this thing, is what governs. We, we put that above God's word. Where? Is that right? We, move, we put America above God. We put the world Europe over God. So whatever American law says or Europe says is what we take and we project it. And so God's word is what? Diminished. But here he's saying that women will do what? Rule them. Women, don't be offended. You have a role to play. But if he say women shall rule over them, he's making a statement. And that is our world today. That's our world today. That is our world today. It is so sad. The Lord, he says, Oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy path. Is it true? Is this true? Look at the leaders, the people who are leading us today. Not only in America, but in the whole world. They are pushing you and I to embrace doctrines of the devil. That's what the word of God is saying. And so from the high school, if you go all the way to kindergarten, they are pushing the children to learn things that ought not to be taught them. They take sin, filth, and teaching the children. And so today, our youth, our little children have become so rebellious. They become so rebellious. They become so what? Rebellious. And you know where the rebellious go. The rebellious don't go to heaven. The Bible says rebellion is like what? Witchcraft. It's like witchcraft. 
So they have caused our little children to be starting practicing. They've started practicing witchcraft from, child, child, from infancy because of their rebelliousness, their stubbornness. So stubbornness is like iniquity, and rebellion is like witchcraft. I didn't invent that. The word of God says. Hallelujah. The Lord stands up to plead and stands to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof, for he has eaten up, for you have eaten up the villiers. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. What mean ye that you beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor? Save the Lord God of hosts. So you see how God is interested in the affairs of the people? If you are a poor person, know that God is interested in our affairs. Don't lose hope. Even though the people at the top are grinding your faces and grinding our faces, and have removed the stuff from the vineyard, and have made sure that they are accumulating everything, the wealth of the world. In the book of Isaiah 5, it says, Woe unto those who buy land and land and house and join it together, so they will be the only ones living on earth. And that is the world that we are living in today. My beloved, it is important that we see the prophetic word of God. This is how clear it is to us. And if God's word is not made so tangibly clear, then I don't know what else. We are not to operate in theorem. We are operating in the word, in the practical. And that is where we are now. You can feel it. And you can what? See it. They buy corporations. Isaiah chapter 5. People buy. They buy corporations. They have so much money that they will buy all their corporations and consolidate them. And lay people off. In the meantime, they've entered into a conspiracy with the people, the owners of those businesses. And telling them that, look, this is, we're going to save you a lot of money. We are going to save your money. We're going to save you from paying the pension and the retirement of these people. We'll buy your company and then we we'll just send them, give them a, a, a severance paycheck, and that is it. And so they are buying companies, buying them, and combining them, and they don't even care. Buy them, lay everybody off, and let just an open, empty building stand there to rot. That is how our world has this, uh, descended into. That's where we are. The greedy are the ones who rule. But God's judgment is what? Coming. Say to the righteous, it shall be what? Well. Say to the righteous, it shall be well. Say to the righteous, it is time to become more and more what? Righteous. Say to the righteous, it is time for us to shed, shed, shed any and everything of this world that has, we have covered ourselves with. Let it go. Hello? Let it what? Go. Let it go. And when we do that, this is what the Lord says he's going to do. Open with me to the book of Psalm. Psalm 36. When you go back home, please, I beg you, go and read the whole ch chapter. Read the whole chapter. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before what? His eyes. There is no what? Fear of God. Because we don't have the fear of God, we choose to do what we want to what? Do. Because we don't have the fear of God. The fear of God is the beginning of what? Wisdom. And we don't have the fear of God. We don't have wisdom. So now you see why we have leaders who don't have what? Wisdom because they don't have the fear of what? Of God. When any leader cannot tell the difference between a man and a woman, we have a problem. They have no fear of God in their eyes. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be what? Hateful. And that is our world today. We live in flatteries. We live in what? Husband flattering the wife. Oh, you yeah, go to the homes, you see. Husbands flattering wives. Wives flattering what? 
husband. The husband goes and buys flowers. Hey, I love you. It's flattery. A boy is deceiving you. He wants something. Once he's gotten what he wants, then his true nature what? will manifest. How can you go and buy flowers and give to your wife today? And then tomorrow you announce that you are divorcing him hey, or separating from him. Is it not flattery? Look into those homes, those who buy flowers most, that most of them were, was, they are divorced today. So it is not the flowers that you give to anybody. We've made it look like flowers, flowers, flowers. If you want to give flowers, give the true flowers. Jesus Christ in your life. Reflect the flowers of Christ. Not this plant you can buy for $15, give to the woman, hey, he loves me. Or what? He is lying. And the same way the women, you speak nicely to your husband one second, and all of a sudden you speak to the husband like you, you are a lie on a tiger. Flatteries. That's what the word of God is saying. We are full of flatteries. Our world is full of flatteries. From governments all the way down to the streets, flattering, 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 and flatteries. The politician will come and speak to you, tell you, will give you the whole world. Once you elect him and become whatever he wants to be, he forgets all of you. You see him in the street, he say, hey, I voted for you. He say, he will not even pay attention to you. That is why I don't like Flatteries. I don't want, like what? Flatteries. No, no, I don't. I look past you to see who you are. Not flatteries. You can try all your flatteries, whatever is with me. Try it. God will give me grace to know that you are flattering me. I don't want that. Be you. And let me be what? Me. Be the true person. And speak the truth. Flatteries is bad. That's what they're saying. Here. Hallelujah. For he flatters himself, flatters himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He has left off to be wise and to do what? Good. He's speaking both to the men and to the women. He devises mischief upon his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He abhors not evil. He does not hate what? Evil, and that is our world today. Just as it was in the days of Israel, it's the same today. We have people leading us who hate no evil. They love evil more than they love righteousness. In the churches of God, the same way. Our leaders, our pastors, those who claim to know God, do not hate sin, they love sin. For when we, en we embrace, when we use inclusiveness, we say what? Inclusiveness. Don't let them feel bad. Don't let them feel bad. Hey, so you want them to feel good in their sins. It's okay. It's okay. Why? Because we want numbers. We want what? Numbers. So don't let anybody feel bad. So don't talk about sin. Don't call sin by its name. No, we are not to make people feel comfortable in their sins. The Holy Spirit will not make you comfortable in your sin until you have repented. When you come to church and you feel comfortable in your sin, then you have not come to the presence of God, especially when you know that just last night you were in the wrong bed. My friend, you have not come to the house of God. Because in the house of God, you cannot make a mockery of what? Of God. Hallelujah. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reaches unto the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are a great deep, O Lord. Thou preservest man and beast. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied. Did you hear that? They shall be what? 
abundantly satisfied with what? Fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of, the, of thy pleasures. Say unto the righteous, it shall be well with him. And these are the benefits that a righteous man reaps by virtue of him walking with what? With God. It is not a cake to be what? Righteous. It is not a cake. It is not a cake. In fact, that's the most popular thing in heaven, to be righteous. To be what? Righteous. And you cannot be righteous in your own strength. Jesus Christ stands ready to hold you by your hand and lead you in the path of what? Righteousness. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 14, as many as are led. Hello? As many as are what? As many as are what? As many as are what? Led by your Holy Spirit, they are the sons of God. The Holy Spirit is always ever ready to lead you and I in the path of righteousness. So David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. The Lord is more than willing to lead you and I in the path of what? Righteousness. If you let him. If you and I will do what? Let him. He will not force himself upon you. If you find yourself falling short, don't say God is not yet through with me. God is not to be blamed for you falling short of walking righteously with me. He is always ready. It is you and I who have opted not to walk with him. Hello? Take that thing away. God says, stop saying that God is not yet through with me. God is not yet through. Who tells you that? Is your hand in the hand of God? When Paul wrote in the book of Romans chapter 8, the last, he says, he says, I am convinced that neither death nor hell, and on and on. You know why Paul was saying that? Paul was saying that to those people who have totally surrendered their lives to Christ, who are wholly abiding in him, who are living in the truth. Because today Satan has been able to work into our hearts to make us, even whilst we are living in sin, we are saying, I know nothing shall separate me from the love of God. You're, you're, you already don't love God anyway. You are living in sin. He said, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Nothing because the word of God says so. It is not that easy. Paul is speaking to those of us who are holy and totally surrendered to Christ and have abandoned the ways of the world and are walking circumspectly with what? With Christ. For such people, neither death, nor hell, nor principalities, nor powers, nor strongholds shall separate us from, from the love of God. Talking about the people like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel, these are people who went through hell, for so, so to speak, and yet they were not willing to bow. To bow. Don't quote God's scripture so cheaply. And don't let anyone deceive you into believing that you can be living in sin and not be separated from the love of God when you are already separated from the love of God. Hallelujah. Cheap, cheap, cheap gospel. It is not even gospel. Anything that is cheap is not gospel because gospel is supposed to be good news. Hallelujah. And the good news cannot be cheapened. Hallelujah. So they shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of pleasure. I pray that God will make every one of you here, and those who are joined us by way of YouTube and Facebook, may the Lord make you drink of the living rivers of what? Living waters, because you are walking in his righteousness. And I have to add that to it. Amen? For with thee is the fountain of life, in thy light shall we see what? When you and I are in the light of God, we shall see light. Jesus Christ is light. And all who are in him can see what? Light. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is what? He is the light. So if you are in him, you can see the light. Amen. May the Lord continue his loving kindness unto all of you because you know him. How did I end that? How did I end that? Because what? 
you know him. I will not exclude that. Because that's what he says. He says, continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee, and thy righteousness to the what? Upright in heart. If you are upright in heart, may the righteousness of God abound towards you. Hallelujah. That is God's word. That is God's word. Hallelujah. Let me conclude and we will eat and I will be gone. Let not the foot of pride come against me. Hello? Let not the foot of pride come what? Against me. And let not the foot of pride also enter into my heart. Hello? Let not the foot of pride enter into my spirit. Pride goes before what? The fall. Don't let God, don't let the seed of pride enter into my heart. And let not the foot of pride come against me. The word of God says in the same book of Psalm, it says, God will not let the rod of the wicked fall upon your lot, because he does not want you to lift up your hand to commit evil. And may it continue to be so, that the Lord will shield and protect all of us. Amen. The Lord is good. It's a stronghold in the time of trouble. But he knows those who are his. May you and I be known to be God's. Amen? May you and I be known to be God's. The book of Nahum. Nahum. I am just saying Nahum because if I say Nahum, everybody will begin to say, ah, Namio. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the book of Nahum, chapter 1, verse 7. Say, the Lord is good. Is a strong God, what? The time of trouble. But he knows those who are his. And then he comes again to the book of 2 Timothy. Said the foundation of God standards, what? Sure. It has an inscription. The Lord knows those who are his. May you and I be among the people whom the Lord knows to be his. The Lord knows those who are his. Therefore, let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from what? Iniquity. Depart from what? Iniquity. Depart from what? Iniquity. The Lord is good. The stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord is good. It's a stronghold in the days of trouble. He knows those who are his. He shows himself strong towards them. Delivers them. Sets them free from the power of sin. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord stands sure. It has an inscription on it. The inscription reads, The Lord knows his own. Therefore, let everyone that names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. For the Lord knows his own. He's a stronghold in the time of trouble. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. He's a stronghold in the time of trouble. He knows those who are his. There are the wicked, the workers of iniquity falling. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. The righteous will stand, but the workers of iniquity will be cast down and they will never be able to rise. May we be found to be righteous. Hallelujah. May we be found to be what? Righteous. May we drink of the rivers of living waters. May we be abundantly satisfied by the Lord. Amen. Because of our righteousness, because of our walking in absolute fear and reverence for this, our loving and living God. Amen. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Heavenly Father, your word I have delivered unto us. Your word I have delivered unto us. Your word I have delivered unto us. I pray that you will breathe upon your word in our hearts. May this word that has entered into our souls and our spirit never come back void according to your word. 
and may it accomplish the purpose for which it has entered into our souls and entered into our spirit. May it bring transformation into our lives. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. As your word has entered into the airwaves of the city of Greensboro, into the airwaves of the county of Guilford, into the airwaves, O oh God, of the state of North Carolina, in the airwaves, the airwaves of the nation of America, and yes, Lord, into all the continents, as the wind carries your word, Lord, in the name of Jesus, upon every heart that your word says, Lord, let it accomplish the purpose for which it has gone out. In Jesus Christ's name, let there be a transformation. Let there be a transformation. Jehovah, let there be a transformation. Let the fear of God engulf the whole earth. Let your fear grip the hearts of men to cause many to run, to flee from the judgment that is to come into the waiting arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do this, my Father, for your glory. I thank you for hearing me. For you hear me always. You have even heard me today. Receive the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen.